All right, it's Monday the 14th. It's Thanksgiving Day in Canada today, so we've had a enjoyable day. Uh, the weather wasn't too bad. Went for a nice 225-kilometer uh, bike ride today. So uh, I also a bit of a sad day because we put the uh, the TR6 in storage today. So I just got back with Les who uh, drove me back. So uh, always a sad day when the uh, TR is going to storage, but that means now that I can uh, get back to work on the TR250 once I unbury it and clean this place up a little bit. So I did pretty well as far as driving the cars this year. Um, I definitely, you know, obviously with my work schedule I wasn't at home often, but when I was I took advantage of uh, driving the TR3 when I could and driving the TR6 when I could. And obviously with the acquisition of the motorcycle this year I ended up driving that uh, quite a bit. I probably put close to, uh, I'm going to say 3,500 to 4,000 kilometers on the bike alone in the last uh, few months. So. Uh, I've enjoyed that as well as the two cars so now it's back to working on the projects over the fall and into the winter and then into the spring before we get the TRs back out and the bikes back out um, so that's it for now guys well uh, like I said the next step out here will be to clean this place up get it a little bit more organized eventually we'll have to uh, get out here and insulate the garage doors but it's still a little uh, too early for that we'll probably wait another month or so before we uh, close ourselves in here for the season um, I prefer to leave that to the last minute possible so we will uh, like I said get out here and clean over the next uh, week or two uh, I do have some travel coming up so unfortunately I'll be away from home again uh, for a few days but when I get back maybe this weekend uh, the following weekend um, I can get out here and uh, start uh, working out here again all right talk to you later Thanks. All right, guys, Saturday, October the 19th, and uh, just after 1 p.m. Not a bad day today. It's uh, a little chilly. It's about ooh, 9 degrees Celsius, about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. A nice, bright, sunny day, fall day. Leaves are still hanging in there, for the most part. But those will be on the ground within the next uh, couple of weeks. Anyway, um, a little bit of time to work in the garage today. So I think the first thing uh, I'm going to do is, uh, you may notice the TR6 is in storage. So all we have left in the garage is the TR250 project and a bunch of junk around it that we need to uh, clean up and put away before we start back on the 250. So that's the plan for today. The workbench is a disaster. So we'll get everything cleaned up in here and organized and ready to resume the project at least today. Tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day. One of our last few warm days it looks like. It's supposed to be about uh, probably close to mm, 70 degrees tomorrow. I'm going to say maybe 65-ish. So it'll probably be the last nice day to go for a motorcycle ride. So we'll probably do that tomorrow. So I don't think we'll be out in the garage much tomorrow. So we'll make an effort to uh, get done what we can do today. So, we'll get to it. Alright, just coming up to uh, 6.30. Starting to get a little dark out. It's looking better. You probably can't tell. But uh, we've got an absolutely full a garbage bag here of junk that I've uh, managed to clear out. Table's clear. Car's unwrapped. Pretty clean on the inside. You got my sanding stuff there. And uh, got to go through the electrical boxes still. Put all my tools away there. I think what I'm going to do, well I've got an old transmission, old 4-speed transmission that I'm going to get rid of. It's pretty rusty inside, looks like i got water inside it, so it's not uh, really going to be saveable. It's only a 4-speed, so I could save it for the case, but uh, you know what, it's taking up a room, so it's going to go to the scrapyard. So, yeah, getting closer. I think what we're going to do though for the rest of the night, we're going to bring the, uh, the bike in from uh, the bike uh, barn. And uh, we're going to take the saddlebags off. I think that's probably going to be the last ride tomorrow. So I'll take the bags off and put them inside for the winter time before we store the bike, whenever that's going to be. Um, so we're going to do that. So I'm probably going to do that before it gets too dark out. And then I think we'll just spend the rest of the night cleaning up the electrical box. And maybe we'll put the hockey game on out of here. Watch it on the TV in the garage. Starting to get a little cooler out. I did move the uh, thermometer over here. A little bit easier to read so I'm getting down close to uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit pretty close to 10 degrees Celsius so it's getting a little chilly out here still rocking the shorts so probably gonna have to change that fairly soon as well all right that's it for tonight see you tomorrow all right guys Sunday morning and we're back out in the garage and just waiting for it to get a little bit warmer before I'm going on my bike ride we did get the bags off last night and uh, 
I like the bike without the bags. I like the back, uh, the bike better without the windscreen as well, but um, the windscreen is sort of a necessity. Well, the bags are not for uh, short trips around town, so we'll put those bags in, in inside anyway for the uh, for the winter. We don't want to leave them outside and give uh, mice a place to nest, so it's probably better that we uh, just leave them in the basement over the winter time. I'm not sure where we're going to store this yet. Uh, might go in the back of my trailer. We'll have to wait and see. I don't really want to leave it outside under the tent uh, for the winter, so we'll try to find it some uh, inside storage. My storage location is pretty full, although I might be able to find room for one more bike. There's always room for one more, right? Anyway, uh, a little chilly out in the garage right now. It's about 10 degrees Celsius. I don't actually quite think that it's actually that warm in the garage. Just I had the doors closed in here, and it tends to keep it a little warmer and just open the garage doors and uh, letting the outside air in seems to be a little cooler than that. I was going to do a little project uh, today and I pulled out my just kind of cleaning things around the car and I got this bin out from underneath the car that had some parts that I was kind of working on. If you remember I had been looking for my hinges for a long period of time and I found the hinges in this bin and along with it I found the door striker and latch components and I was thinking about sandblasting those and getting those into paint. I actually even pulled all my paint out uh, to try to give it sort of a cadmium look. I've got a bit of a, a CAD kit thing going on over there, fake CAD kit from Eastwood. But then I thought, well there's no sense in doing that because I'll probably end up marking them up because I'll probably have them on and off the cars to uh, adjust the fitment of the doors. So I figured that'd be a bit of a waste of time to uh, to paint them and get them looking good and then have them all scratched up from uh, test fitting. So we will put those back in the bin and we'll uh, worry about those a little bit later. So uh, i got to figure out what I want to do on this car. Uh, I still will have one fender to put into black epoxy but it's still a little too cold to do that uh, unless I get the heater off going on out here. So I've still got the, uh, the door on the, uh, the passenger side and the rear, other rear fender to go into black epoxy. And I would have liked to have done that uh, before the winter time, but uh, again, the temperature is now fighting me. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Uh, it hasn't flash rusted, which is a good thing. It's been pretty dry. And uh, it'll obviously be pretty dry over the winter time here with 0% uh, humidity. Um, so I don't have too much worry about it uh, rusting any more than it is uh, right now. But uh, I would have preferred to get it into black epoxy if possible. But... It's not going to be the case, I don't think. So we'll figure out what we're going to do on this thing, and uh, we'll be back. Well, you got to start somewhere, no matter how small. So I figured I would uh, work on getting the hinges attached back to the car. And that may sound easy, except if you recall, um, I actually put new mounts in this car. These were all rusted out. So uh, I've actually got to go back and sandblast this clean and prime it. But this area, sorry, uh, this area here was all brand new on both sides. So we broke, we ended up breaking the fasteners um, when we were trying to get the hood hinges off the car. So what I've got now is I've uh, actually upsized the fasteners when I repaired that area. So we've gone from, here's the original, original sized fastener, and we're going to go one size larger, uh, which is going to be this size. So I managed to go through my bolt stash and find the proper size. I've just cleaned this one up. I've got a wire brush on a drill just cleaning the threads up. And what we're going to do is I've got the other four here. We're going to do the same. And just wire brush this, clean this up. And then we'll attach the hood hinges back to the car. Now, I don't know if you might recall, I had a hard time finding these hinges and I found them upstairs in my uh, completed parts room because you can see that they're you know, nicely cleaned and painted black. The only problem is these are supposed to be body color, they're supposed to be actual royal blue, so these are going to have to be scratched up and repainted anyway. So I figured I'd play around with these hinges a little bit, get them mounted to the car, get the proper fasteners uh, located, cleaned up, and uh, we're going to have to mount the hood at some point anyway to check for fitment and for gaps, etc. So that's why I was looking for the hinges originally. So we'll go ahead and do that. It's a small job, but it's a job that needs to be done nonetheless. So here we go. All right, I think that's how the hinges go, if I recall correctly. Anyway, we've got the uh, hood out, the bonnet, and we'll see if we can uh, get that installed temporarily. I have the fasteners for it somewhere. Anyway, uh, 
I did have to ream out the holes a little bit on the bracket because of the larger fasteners, just a tiny little bit, just to get them to align with the uh, with the holes, but no big deal. So, anyway, let's fit the hood. All right, the hood is just sitting on the car. As you can see, I've got some surface rust happening here. I think it's because it was close to the door and it was resting up against where I keep my spare steel. So, we're gonna have to get that off of there. A little bit of on the nose where we're sitting on a foam pad. So we'll break out the uh, <clears throat> stripping disc and get that off of there before it gets any worse. I have found the hardware for the hinges to attach to the bonnet. And there are the fasteners there. So we're doing the same process with the wire wheel and just cleaning them up. On the TR6, there's a critical fastener that goes in the side of the hinge that comes from the side as opposed to the bottom. And on the TR6, it's shorter. So I wanted to make sure that I don't have the same issue with the... Uh, the bonnet on the TR250 because on the TR6 if you put the longer fastener in the wrong location it actually makes a little dent in the hood so just wanted to check that out so it doesn't look like it's an issue on the TR250. Alright the hood's back on the car which I quite like to see. It's bolted up in all the hinge locations up front so the three on the, uh, the bottom of the hood and the one on the side. I did clean up that surface rust. That's looking a little better. Got quite a bit of damage at the front of this bonnet that we'll have to contend with. Quite a big dent here. And uh, this eyebrow here is missing a piece. Should come across. So I'm probably going to have to put a piece of rod in here to fix this. You can see there's a big chunk that's been brazed in here. What are the odds of that? But uh, this one's got a much better line across as opposed to this one. You can see how it comes out to here and then dips in where this damage is. So. I can also feel it's got a bit of damage on the inside. It feels like the lip has been rolled up a little bit. So I'll have to do some work on the, the uh, leading edge of this bonnet at some point. But other than that, don't have the buffers in the back yet for the hood. So it's not uh, sitting as it should. It's also sitting up. I've got the wrong fasteners in the fenders. These are actually little uh, domed head uh, bolts that go in here, which I don't want to use until I absolutely have to. Um, and I knew we were going to have a bit of an issue. Alin and I... Uh, we're trying to fix this at one point. You can see how low it is here, and it's about the right height here, if not just a little bit too high. So we were trying to fix this at one point to bring this up level with the body tub, but uh, we were unsuccessful to do that. So I think we're just going to live with that. We'll maybe uh, put a little tiny bit of filler in the uh, in the front edge of this just to bring it up a tiny bit, but not too much. Um, it's not bad. I can live with it. Anyway, the gap across is pretty good, pretty consistent from uh, both sides, so happy with that. And that's pretty much about it for now. Uh, I think it's warm enough to probably to go for my bike ride, so I think we're going to do that before uh, it turns the evening and it starts to get colder. All right, guys, Monday night, October 21st, just come up to 10 p.m., and I thought I'd come out and spend uh, a little bit of time in the garage. It's election night here, so we're just watching the election uh, coverage as the, uh, the votes roll in, and uh, not looking good for the Conservatives at the moment, losing to the Liberals. Anyway, uh, We'll take our mind off that and uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, planning or work on the TR250 tonight. What we're going to do is now we've got the hood installed. If you might recall if you go back uh, to quite a few videos ago I was talking about putting a, a bonnet strut kit on this uh, which will obviously raise the, uh, the bonnet forwards on uh, two hydraulic struts. Right now it's a uh, obviously a manual lift mechanism. Uh, that you've got to do so we're thinking of doing these bonnet struts I think it'd be a cool addition to the car so we're gonna see uh, we bought a bonnet strut kit for the TR6 which is not gonna work for a TR250 but we also bought some aftermarket struts that we think we can adapt to uh, to get to work for this car and now is the perfect time to do this uh, it entails drilling some holes possibly making some brackets and possibly shaving off a stock bracket that is there for the stock uh, hood mechanism the actual prop rod mechanism is and I'll show you this if I had the hood open but I don't at the moment but I'll, I'll show you what I mean later there's actually a bracket here that holds a prop rod and obviously if we use the struts we won't need the prop rod so we'll end up having to shave off that current uh, or the stock uh, location for the uh, prop rod anyway you'll see it when I uh, pop the bonnet uh, we're gonna check out the uh, it's been a while, so I've got to re-familiarize myself with the stuff I bought to do this. So I'm going to dig that out. I think it's under the workbench in that blue box. 
So we'll dig those struts out and see where we make uh, heads or tails of how we're going to go about this. Okay, we just got the uh, bonnet propped up with a wooden dowel. And uh, this is the, uh, the bracket <clears throat> that holds the hood prop up here. So if we do with go this conversion, we're going to eliminate this entirely from the car. Um, we'll probably try to save this bracket in case uh, somebody wants to put it back on. I'll, uh, I'll keep it just in case somebody ever wants to return this car to stock, which is going to be probably next to impossible after all the mods I'm going to be doing to it. I can't imagine anybody wanting to go back to stock on this car anyway. Um, so what we're going to try to do is, uh, I've got the, uh, the strut kit actually from uh, Clark and Clark is the name of the company. This is for the TR6. It's actually a strut kit for both the boot and the bonnet. Uh, I'm not going to do the boot lid on the TR250. Um, it's a little, it's quite different actually than the uh, boot lid for the TR6. So I can't see that strut actually working well at all for the boot lid. But for the bonnet, um, the TR6 struts are going to be too long. So what I've done is I've got uh, a shorter strut. And this is made by a company called Suspa. And there's the part number there. So these are the struts that we're going to use. And I also bought a couple of uh, bracket kits. Sounds like it's hailing outside. Let's have a look. Sounds like it's awfully windy. Yeah. It's just the wind. Or maybe there's an animal scratching at the door. Who knows? Anyway, so we've got these ball studs. Um, you know, spring mounting brackets. Uh, so we're going to see if we can sort of adapt these and I'll show you what uh, the plan is and what we're going to use as far as a pickup is concerned uh, and I'll try to reference it on the car. I'm going to pop this open and see if these all actually work. I was thinking that I was going to have to make a custom bracket but I'm going to see if I can adapt these to possibly work. Okay so I've just done a quick uh, fit up to see if the parts that I got might work. Um, so these were intended to fit to the um, one of the studs, well, one of the bolt-up locations on the hinge. Let me see if I can show you where that is. So I was going to try to hook it up to this here. So it's going to either look something like that. I think I'd prefer to actually have it on the inside, but I don't think this is going to work clearance-wise. So I may be able to modify and trim it down, but anyway, that's the location I wanted to use for the ball stud on the nose of the hood and then the other pickup point would be on the inner fender which would just use, I was thinking of using one of these but that's probably not going to work <clears throat> so we were thinking about using one of these styles and that's going to have to go somewhere over here something like that but I'm not really digging the look of that. So I think what we'll just do is we'll end up drilling a hole through and bolting this on the other side of the inner fender and just having that stud stick out like that wherever the location is as far as the length is concerned and we'll have to measure that a few times and make sure it's the same on both sides. So that's the idea as far as the pickup point here. We're going to go through this double thickness of metal where the wheel arch is attached to the body tub. So that's the part we're going to probably use for there. So anyway, we'll pick it up tomorrow. I just wanted to come out and take a look at what I have and see how much fabrication I'm going to have to do. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to work on some sort of bracket to pick up here. But we'll figure that out tomorrow. It's, it's late, obviously, but I just wanted to come out and see what I had and sort of think, of, think about it overnight in my dreams. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, just coming up to quarter to six, Tuesday, October 22nd. Just out uh, in the garage after work for a power hour or so before dinner. And uh, we're back on the bonnet strut project. So uh, we're going to fab some uh, brackets up. Um, I, I took a look at what we had yesterday out of all the kits that we had, or the two kits that I'd ordered, and I think I've got a solution to uh, making a bracket that I'm going to hook up to this fastener here. So I'll pull those out, and uh, you can have a look at what those. I got, you're going to have to basically cut them up a little bit but I think they'll work uh, I was gonna I was thinking I was gonna have to make my own bracket and I still might have to make my own bracket if this doesn't work but 
I'm going to cut a couple of the brackets uh, that they'd sent along. I think it'll probably work here. I've got to shorten them up a little bit. So anyway, we'll take a look at what I've got in the kit, what I think will work in this location. And we'll be back in a minute. Okay, here's one of the brackets from the kits that I'm going to pirate. I believe this is from the, uh, the boot lid uh, kit uh, for the TR6. So I'm thinking this is going to go up here, something like this. So it's obviously too large. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to shorten this bracket a little bit uh, with the ball stud on it. And we'll attach it to this fastener here. So I'm going to probably take this fastener out, make a little template, see how much room I have before I trim this down and then drill a hole for this uh, bolt to go through. That's the plan anyway, so let's see if this is going to work or not. Okay, this is what I'm thinking I do. I'm just going to shorten these up on the ends and then we're going to drill a hole down here through the bottom piece where it'll actually thread through the bolt hole for the hood hinge. Hopefully I'll be able to get the bolt in there okay. Anyway, uh, let's cut this up and uh, see where we get to. Okay guys, here's a quick look at that bracket that I was talking about. So we did manage to get the, uh, the hex uh, bolt in there. Um, not sure if I'm going to have enough space. I think I will for uh, the lock washer on there. If not, I can always remove the wash lock washer and put a little blue, tight on, uh, blue Loctite on. I need to have enough room to obviously get the ball on the, um, the strut. And I think there's enough room there, but uh, I'm going to install it and see what it looks like. Maybe uh, put the strut on and uh, have a quick look. See if I've got full range of motion. Alright, there's the little bracket uh, mounted to that bolt hole location. And we have the strut here. So the strut's just a little spring-loaded apparatus that slips over the ball. You can release it by uh, pulling up on this little uh, spring steel piece at the back. So basically I'm just going to pop that on there. Like so. So that's on. So now we just really need to locate the other end of this, which is going to, as I'd mentioned before, it's going to go through this double thickness of uh, metal on the wheel arch. So uh, it's going to be in this location here somewhere, and I've got that ball stud that we need to drill a hole through and bolt it on the inside of the inner fender. So we're probably going to mark that out, and uh, we'll go ahead and drill that hole. I'm trying to decide whether I want this hood fully extended out or whether I want to actually put a little bit of pressure on the strut to keep it from just touching the uh, bond of the car. I mean, these are as far as the hinges can go. So I'm not sure if that's a bad thing. I won't put any extra stress on the strut when the hood is open because it's basically resting as far as it can go at the moment on its swing. So I'm gonna think about that a little bit. So after a quick investigation, I don't think I want the uh, Hood okay, it's just about 8.30 and we're back. Sorry I got distracted. I had Les blowing the horn outside coming to pick me up to go for uh, half price chicken wings tonight, Tuesday nights. So, uh, okay, we're back. I can't remember where I left off. We're talking about the struts and where to position this on the inner fender, I think. And I've decided that uh, I don't want it to put too much stress going forward on the bonnet because it actually if I go too far forward, it actually puts pressure on this front uh, valence piece. So uh, we're probably going to leave the hood exactly where it is and we'll attach the, uh, the bracket here or the, uh, the ball socket right here on the inner fender at this point. And then of course we'll do the same. We'll measure uh, distance and make sure that we uh, do the same distance for the other side as far as locating the ball for this pickup point. Hopefully that makes sense. Alright guys, there's the first strut installed. You can see the, uh, the ball just here through the uh, inner fender bolted here. So that's looking pretty good. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll see if it operates as it should. Alright guys, the uh, bonnet struts are installed. I think they look okay. They actually uh, seem to work okay. It's not a huge amount of uh, force. It basically doesn't throw the bonnet up, which is nice. I didn't want that. And it's kind of a fairly gentle coming down. I haven't got the, uh, the bonnet catch in there yet, so I've just got a screwdriver holding this up. But uh, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice easy flip up and stop. So I'm quite happy with that. So something a little different. Alright, so we'll call that a night, 
and uh, eventually we'll uh, take that bracket off for the, uh, the bonnet stay rod because we won't need that anymore. Eventually we'll also fit the, uh, the catch plate for the spring to make sure this pops up okay. It should pop up on its spring that's a pretty hefty spring. So yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, like I said, we'll call it a night and uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow.